Welcome to another episode of Real Talk. I am your host, Carlos Gill. We are at the NASDAQ market site here in Times Square. And today's guest that's joining me on the set is Ryan Leslie. Ryan is a Grammy-nominated musician, producer, and he's also the founder of Superphone. Ryan, welcome to Real Talk. Thanks for having me. It is a pleasure to have you here on the set, my man. Pleasure to be here. So I've been following your entrepreneurial game for a moment now. Okay. We were talking here offset about Superphone, which we're going to talk quite a bit about. Bon and Bao uses it. Mm. Gary V uses it. Right. You use it. Yeah. But let's talk about your come up. You've made your name in the music industry yes. as a Grammy nominated musician, yes. hip hop artist, producer. Yes. And now you're an entrepreneur. So talk to us about the hip hop game. How do you get started in music? Listen, I feel like I've always been an I've always been an entrepreneur. So from the very early age of whenever I had my first lemonade stand, I always knew that I needed to work hard in order to make, make money, in order to, to have the freedom to do what I wanted to do. So from the time I was in college, I, I had a little barbershop in college. And uh, that freedom, I think, is the, really what uh, what drives and motivates me to continue with the entrepreneurial spirit so that I can choose the projects that I feel are gonna be most impactful. In the very beginning, it was about changing my own circumstances, and then that grew to changing the circumstances of my family, and then that grew to wanting to change the circumstances of literally everyone on the planet. And so that's really what the trajectory went from. For me, it was just about making enough money so I could do music, once I was doing music, making enough money so I could change my, my, my life and my family. And then now that I've done some music, I've made some millions, now I'm interested in empowering that next generation or even this generation to be able to get to that kind of financial freedom so that they can really focus on doing what they love to do. Because I feel like when you do what you love to do, that's when your gift to the world is gonna be of the most value. How has social media specifically changed the music industry? Because you see artists, not just like yourself, but many others out there that are active now on Instagram, on Twitter, on Snapchat. So maybe speak to the audience out there watching. How is it that you leverage social media to be more connected with your fans? Social media really is a, it's, it's a very, very beautiful part of the information superhighway. We're in the information age. You can go online and basically learn anything that you have a desire to learn. And I think social media is a channel. I remember when I first discovered YouTube, I couldn't believe that I could broadcast to the world for free. I mean, there's a cost to it. We'll talk about the costs later. But I could broadcast to the world without an actual monetary charge to myself. And it could be a global stream to the entire world. And I think when we could take advantage of that platform, whether it's on Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, whatever that platform is, it allows us to have a, I would say it allows us to have a, a, a direct channel to what people are really thinking and feeling. And so I can express myself in whatever way I want to. And you know, I, I have these conversations all the time with young people. I do brunches every Saturday and Sunday and just bring whether it's influencers or neuroscientists or you know just the most interesting people I know around the table to talk about how social media is really impacting the way that we communicate, the way that we share, the way that we express ourselves. And it's had a profound impact on, on just the way that, that, that we uh, connect as human beings. Is there a direct correlation though between having a social media presence and being active and selling more records or in this case getting more downloads on iTunes? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, listen, you know, we're, we're long beyond the days of terrestrial radio and terrestrial television dictating what we consume in terms of entertainment. And so, I mean, I actually went and, and saw a, a, a friend of mine over at Instagram and the statistics are staggering really. I mean, Instagram users are checking Instagram three times an hour. Mm -hmm. So- On average. Yeah. So there, there's a stream of, 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 of content that's happening there. 
and you want to be in that stream when people are, are checking. And I mean, listen, I, I want people to just think about their own Instagram use. How often do they check in? Who yeah. are they following? And uh, content that they catch, content that they miss, content that they share. And so, I mean, I always tell, I always tell young people who are, are, are getting into social media that every single piece of content that you post is like a lottery ticket. It has the ability to be shared by millions and millions of folks. And so the fact that you can actually print your own lottery tickets, if you're looking for exposure, you just got to print your own lottery tickets. But let's, let's make them as engaging. Let's, let's give them a viral coefficient. Let's give them all of the elements that you would want in a piece of content that you would share with your own friends. So how long have you been in the music industry for? How many years, approximately? I caught my break in the music industry really in 2003. Okay, so, so this is pre-Facebook, pre-social media, yeah. I believe MySpace. Yeah. Maybe it was just catching off back then. Yeah. And uh, name maybe some of the artists that you've worked with. <sighs> Kanye West, okay. Mary J. Blige, Britney Spears, Beyonce, Definitely spent some time in the studio with Madonna, Alicia Keys. Some records came out, some records still, we'll see if they ever see the light of day. Uh, but I mean, probably my most recognizable work was with Fabulous. I did a record with him called You Be Killing Them, another record with Carrie Hilson uh, called uh, Every Day, Everything, Everywhere. Uh, and, uh, and then my most successful commercial work was with Cassie. So that was an artist that, uh, that I discovered, fell in love with, and uh, we, I mean, took advantage of every, I mean, it was magical. Had, I think it, it, was, it called was called Me and, and me? You. Me, me and You? Yeah. yeah. And, and really, it, it was magical, man. It was, a, it was a MySpace trajectory that, you know. That was a song back in the day that when it would come on at the club, it was like, all right, it's, it's, still, a, it's a special it's, moment. It's like when that song would come on at the club, it, yeah, it was still, a special it's, moment. It's, it was like a certain time of the evening. Yeah, yeah, it still works. That record still works in the club. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I still go to clubs with this Switzerland, Sweden. I could be in Slovakia. I would be in New York, Miami. That record is still, I mean, we were just at the Met Ball after party. And, you know, I'm, I'm in there. I'm looking at Pharrell. Pharrell heard the record come on. And he's giving me a, yeah, this, this record was it, you know? So, I mean, I think really, uh, that, I mean, that, that was a, a really, uh, it was like a crown jewel of all the productions I've ever made, me and you. It, it, it just had all the right elements, her as the vessel, mm -hmm. the social media platform that broke the song, yeah. the, way that, uh, the way that it caught on around the world. I mean, it was, it was a special moment. So I like that I'm here chopping it up with you because oftentimes I compare the marketing game to the rap game. Okay. So I'm not a musician myself. I grew up, you know, following all the greats, Tupac, Biggie, mm -hmm. on and on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at the marketing game today mm -hmm. and you, you hear the word collaboration a lot. Yeah. If you want to go ahead and grow your brand, if you want to get your name out there, you have to collaborate. You have to do stuff like this. You have to link up yeah. with the Gary V's of the world, mm -hmm. right? But you just named all these artists that you've worked with, which mm -hmm. goes back to collaboration before social media, right? You still had to work with people in your industry if you want to go ahead and, and grow large and support one another. And, you know, I often make that comparison to marketing. The flip side to that is, you know, the hip hop game and marketing game can be very similar because you've got people that take shots at one another. And this is now a, a real communication medium to, for executives. It happens in the marketing world for executives to take shots give me at an, each other. Give me an example. Oh, man. A recent example of, of marketing executives taking shots at each other. You don't see it like at the Fortune 500 level There's CMO beef. They're really but there's CMO beef. There's okay. social media thought leader beef. Okay. There's all those things that happen. So mm. it's funny because when you really look at the greats in the music industry and they're come up, and even yourself, you know, before social media, I'm sure you were doing shows, selling CDs at your shows, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to get your music as, you know, as many places. It's no different than, you know, an artist who is in the business game writing books, a content creator that's trying to grow his or her YouTube channel. Right. You know, there's people creating podcasts. They're putting them on SoundCloud nowadays, which is kind of blurring the lines of, of audio. And yeah, you know, at all levels, there's going to be beefs, even yeah. in the business world. Yeah. And social media kind of amplifies it on another level. You didn't give me an exact. You didn't give me an exact <laughs> example, but I, I, will, I will love to research some CMO. So, so you know what? Kind of making it, bringing it back to what we're going to be talking about with automation, 
Mm -hmm. There's a lot of thought leaders out there in the social media space that are completely against automation. Mm -hmm. And I'll be the first one to raise my hand if a bot or if any sort of AI can mm -hmm. automize things mm -hmm. that free up my time to mm -hmm. be able to do this mm -hmm. or to be able to serve my clients, I'm going to go ahead and use it. Mm -hmm. But there's thought leaders out there that are more old school mm -hmm. that feel that if you're, uh, if you're you know, putting you're automation mm -hmm. and automating your marketing game, then you're being less human, you're being less personal. And I've had marketing thought leaders take shots at me for using mm. bots mm. on Instagram, for example. Okay. Okay. So, you know, that's just an example of what happens when people want to criticize the same way people criticize like your lyrics or your mm. songs mm. in the marketing space. They'll criticize the way that you market techniques, the techniques. Right. Exactly. Mm. And what have you found? I, I feel like I'm interviewing you now, <laughs> but what have you found to actually work in terms of automation and AI that actually works for you? So for everyone that's listening and, and thinking about how they can automate their lives so they have more time to be creative, what have you found that so, actually so works for you? So here's the thing, you? two things. One, to be able to identify who's your true fan. You know, a fan can also be a potential customer. Yeah. So let's face it, you know, social media, you're gonna get, come across fans, potential clients, people that wanna cut you a check or in some cases, people that you want to cut a check to. So how do you weed through all of that noise that's happening? Because it's noisy, and you have a lot of platforms. Like we mentioned them before. You know, even before we came on the set, I'm telling you, I'm you know, active on Twitter, on Facebook. So you have to find a way to sift through this noise because you only have so much time in the day. It's true. You know, we're sitting here in the studio for the next hour. That's an hour less that I'm engaging on social media. So if you can find a way to sift through that noise and still stay relevant, what's going to happen is people are going to see your content and they're gonna send you that DM, or in this case, the text message. Right. And the second play is data. To be able to capture a name, mm -hmm. an email address, or a phone number, mm -hmm. that's more valuable, in my opinion, than a like, yeah. or than even a follow. It's true. So yeah. a, lot of, a lot of marketers out there, even a lot of brands, are constantly sweating the like game and the follower game. They're trying to get their likes and follows up, where in reality, what you need to be doing is get people's data, mm -hmm. so you can sell directly to them, and communicate directly to them off of social. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So let's talk about Superphone. Yeah. You, I mean, you said it. You just set it up. <laughs> let's talk yeah, right to Superphone. Yeah. You have a technology in which you, as an artist, are able to give out your phone number. Yes. And now you're able to have your most engaged fans send you a text directly. Yes. Let's talk about what was the inspiration for Superphone. The inspiration for Superphone is everything that you just talked about. Just the ability to have that direct line of communication. I believe success happens at the speed of communication. So the faster you can get the right message to the right person with the right resources at the right time, the faster you can achieve success. So for me, that success in the, in the short term was selling more records. I wanted to make sure that people knew that my record was out, they could support it. And once the record happened, I wanted to make sure they knew where I was performing and they could come see that electrifying live show that we put so much time, energy, and resources into making. And so the ability to do that on social, I felt there was a barrier. And that barrier was very simply, it's noisy. And that noise is created by the number of folks that all of my supporters were following. So it wasn't that they specifically wanted to miss out on what I was actually telling them, it was just that they're following so many people that by the time they actually scrolled and were ready to fall asleep, they might have missed my post. And so when I send them a text message directly, I'm not in that social media noise. I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a, 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 a much more intimate place in that device that they use all the time, which is, their, which is their mobile device. And so I just wanted to have that direct line. And then I started to realize that I didn't have a cell phone number on all my LinkedIn connections. So when I wanted to connect with someone, I would have to wait to see if they even looked in their in-mail. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't have a cell phone number on all my Facebook friends. So when I wanted to connect with someone, I had to wait until they saw my Facebook message. And I didn't have a cell phone number on all the people I even followed on Instagram. So when I wanted to connect with them, I had to wait until they opened their DM. I wanted a cell phone number on everyone just because when I want to get my point across, when I want to collaborate, when I want to make big business happen, when I want to make big impact happen, I don't want to waste time waiting for them to have to overcome a communication barrier. I want to get directly into that communication cha channel that's I want to get directly into that communication channel that's most urgent. And that's yeah, let's face it, you know, to your point, who doesn't check their cell phone when that notification comes through or when it pops up on your screen? Yeah. You're going to check 
your your mobile messages before you are even an email address. So exactly. would you say to your point that a phone number for a brand or in this case an entrepreneur or content creator to own access to someone's phone number is more valuable than an email? I would have to say absolutely. And that's the crusade I'm on. I'm, I'm interested in a new wave of ownership. And ownership is really, in my opinion, it's really about starting with what you can own. And most people don't even have ownership of their own data. Mm -hmm. So the number of people that I've sat down with that said, okay, do you own your medical records? They don't even own their medical records. People that I sit down and say, do you own the records of all the text messages you've ever exchanged, even with the big cell phone companies, they don't own their data. Do you own your Facebook data? Until recently, they could only just recently download all their data and back it up. Cloud storage makes it very, very inexpensive to actually have an archive of everything pertaining to you that exists digitally. So it's not just your photos and videos that you take on your phone, you can actually have conversations. Those conversations, I believe, in the future are going to create the framework for how we can actually accelerate as a civilization. We'll be able to take this conversation. Yeah, you and I have taken the initiative to film this conversation and record it so that people can actually consume it and learn from it. And I believe in the future, when I pass away, I can actually leave an archive of all my conversations with whoever approves it so that those conversations, the, the, the backroom deals, the, the exchanges that happen off camera, I think that's where the real wealth of information actually is. And up to this point, yeah, there's a lot of publicly available information, but the, the way that people actually close deals, the way that people actually get put on, the way that people actually uh, go from unknown to super famous, a lot of those conversations are not publicly available and so we find ourselves struggling to try to figure it out over and over and over again and those closed circles i believe when those circles are open and when we have the truth and transparency around what it really takes to accelerate our whole civilization our whole society can actually accelerate faster we could solve problems uh, more quickly and so that's why I believe that 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 uh, having the cell phone number on everyone is so important because you actually own the data right now if you wanted to download all your Instagram DMs just so you had a record of all of them it would be a challenge right you have to just go through and screenshot through all of them right. screenshot all of them and have somebody transcribe them with our platform we're basically ushering in the future of real ownership so from the time you have a cell phone number and you give it to everyone and you start texting and calling, you have ownership of the most important data in your life, which is the conversations that you're having. So let me get this straight with Superphone. Once someone sends you a text message, is there a back end CRM that's web based that I can see a log or is there a mobile app where I can now see a log of everyone that's text that number? Absolutely. And do I have the ability to do any sort of marketing campaigns where I can send a message out over text these individuals. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what it's built for. So it's built first and foremost for you to have a cell phone number on everyone in your life. So that's why it's very easy. I have a URL actually, textryan.com. You go to textryan.com, you leave your number, you will receive a text from me. I have your number. Okay. You have access directly to me. If you're persistent, I will see those messages. Now, yeah, because my question was going to be, how do you, with your big following, sort through all of these text messages? If I'm sure it's hard to even sort through social media notifications for you. Yeah, well, I mean, we make it very, very easy. And the way we make it easy is I'm able to prioritize messages. So messages from my family, they got priority. Messages from people who spent money with me, they got priority. Messages from people who've invested in Superphone, they have priority. Messages from artists or influencers that I feel I can collaborate with, they have priority. And I'm able to set that priority based on whatever criteria I want. Journalists like Kerry, priority, right? And I'm able to set who can actually ring my phone, who actually gets sent to voicemail, just send me a text. I'm able to uh, also have inactivity tracking. So when you and I meet, we exchange information. I can tell my phone, Carlos is important. So if my phone recognizes that more than two weeks has gone by and I haven't reached out, just reach out on my behalf because I can scale the intent that I have to stay in touch with you by just telling my phone, you're important. 
I don't want to lose touch with you. We, we literally have a, a patent pending on this technology. It's called Never Lose Touch, which allows me to literally set a, a, a time right. interval. And whenever there's inactivity over that time interval, it will actually reach out and text people on my behalf to make sure that I'm always in the loop. I'm always top of mind. When people have an opportunity, they think of me because I just shot them a text. Well, I have to say, Ryan, that you've made a new believer and customer out of me. <laughs> so I'll be signing up for Superphone. Uh, yeah. And before this interview airs, I'll have a text Carlos domain. Yeah. yeah. So my community can also follow me. Now, let's talk about the business side of this. Sure. There's a lot of brand marketers out there sure. that are probably thinking, all right, look, we've got Facebook and we've mm. got our hands full of Instagram and we're creating all this content. How does Superphone mm. fit into the marketing mix? Yeah. I mean, it's very, very, very clear. You can text people. That's it. So they don't miss out. So when I have a show, when I have a product, when I'm doing my book, when I'm dropping a single, I have new content. Even if I make a new Instagram post, I can text people that URL and make sure that they actually see it. The statistic is 98% of text messages are open within the first three minutes. If you give them a reason to click 40 to 50%, maybe even 70% of those people are gonna click that link. When you think about those kinds of conversions, those conversions are staggering compared to email or any other social media platform. Really, this is, this is really the advent of marketing on dark social. And oh, anyone that it. you've heard about dark, it. anyone you've heard talked about dark social talks about the power of dark yeah. social. Yeah, it's cool if I post your your flyer or post your album cover or post your new product on Instagram. But when I actually send you a text and say, hey, man, you got to check this out. It's awesome. That dark social push is infinitely more powerful because there's a, there, there is a, there is a, an intimacy right. behind that. Well, the way I think about it also is that, you know, you can now market at the speed of light. Yes. Which is true real time. Yes. So the way I think about it is if you're Best Buy, for example, before, you're, before you leak your Black Friday specials out a couple days before Thanksgiving, just go ahead and give away your Black Friday specials over text message to your yeah. most engaged super fans. Yeah, and I would say, I would take it a step even further for Best Buy. I would give every single salesperson on the floor of Best Buy a super phone number so that each salesperson can actually have 100 or 200 folks so that the personal intimacy is even that much more powerful. The text message from Best Buy, yeah, you're right, it might cut through, but the text message from my guy at Best Buy is even going to be that much more powerful. So when you, when you see, uh, when you see uh, uh, a text message about a new Samsung television, right, um, and it's coming from your guy, right, at PC Richard, that's the way that you're going to actually say, you know what, uh, well, yeah, what's the special on that? Or when you walk into a restaurant, when you see the special coming from your guy, they say, oh, yeah, what's the specials? So I think as humans, we do really crave that personal connection. And so I think that's really where, where we, can, we can start to see Superphone scale. So it doesn't have to be all the way up at the top brand level. Right. I don't think I necessarily would have a you know, a hotline for PC Richard in my phone, but I would love to have my guy. I got a guy at PC Richard and they send me a text and it's all built on a right. platform that allows for the, for the brand to actually right. see the conversations that are going on. And it's not just the consumer that wants that intimacy, but I spent 10 years working in brand marketing and I yeah. can tell you when you're on the brand side, your CMO, your mm -hmm. chief marketing officer is looking for instant ROI. Yeah. They're looking for instant results, which is yeah. why email marketing is still really hot yeah. with brands. So yeah. now you go one step further with mobile marketing, text yeah. message marketing, essentially, you can see that people are opening up and responding yes. almost in real time to that message quicker than a Facebook post, quicker than even a tweet, which gets lost. Yeah. So I could tell that we are going to be having some mastermind conversations over text. Let's go. How we can get Superphone in front of every brand, especially the brands like the Best Buys, that are get that have millions of phone numbers right. with their CRM. Right. And so I think that those those phone numbers need to be distributed down to folks that actually really do care on a human level. I think you know even in the age of technology and automation people really do care about connecting on a human level. I think the statistic is that uh, 70 or 80% of all inbound calls to a hotline can probably be handled by the, the, the IVR or the automated system. Mm -hmm. 
But when you call an airline and you want to make a change, you don't sit there and press all the buttons and wait. Nine times out of ten, you just say agent or you click zero because you want that human connection. And so I believe there needs to be a very, very intelligent way to scale that human connection across hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of salespeople or brand ambassadors across the world and it all be aggregated under the umbrella of one Superphone account for the big brands, but they can actually see those human interactions. And those human interactions, I think, are also going to, um, those human interactions are, are, are going to inform them on how to be more effective with their messaging. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. You mentioned Kerry. I'm going to be bringing Kerry Flynn here on the set in just yeah. a moment, who's with Digiday. I'm going to ask yeah. you to stick around. I'll stick around. Because we're going to bring sure. you and Kerry back together after her and I rap back and forth, no right. pun intended, on Superphone. Okay. Before we go ahead and, and move over to Kerry, right. let the viewers out there know where they can follow you and, okay. most importantly, your phone number so they can get in touch with you. Like I said, man, the easiest way to do this is textryan.com. I can say a phone number. I know what the struggle is of remembering a phone number. Textryan.com. Just leave your number. You want to continue the conversation, you leave your number. I'll shoot you a text right back. Say that you saw me on this show, and I'll make sure that we continue the dialogue. Thank you so much and for having me. I'll see you in a little bit. Real talk. Ryan Leslie, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you go to text Ryan. Get on his list, get in his phone, swoop in there. It's not about the DMs anymore. It's about, yeah. the, it's about the messages. Right. Stay tuned. We're going to be bringing Carrie Flynn of Digiday on the set next.